Davis, the other day, um, can you talk about what you were seeing and what you were thinking when Utah had the ball in the last possession of the game? They were driving. Time was coming off the clock. Were you thinking coach is going to call timeout or I think the defense is ready to stop them? And as an offensive guy, are you sort of looking at your watch and wondering how much time am I going to have left if I need it? How, how, what was your thought process during that whole thing? And, well, first of all, it was a great football game to watch. We played a very good Utah team. I expected to win a lot of games in the Pac-12. And um, that was the first thought, is how good Utah was as a football team. And the second thought, obviously, as an offensive guy, I would have you know, enjoyed if Coach Dykes called a timeout. But he told us on the sideline that the defense is going to stop him. And Coach Coffin had a great game plan going in for you know, the, the final 10 yards of the game. And he did. You know, they proved him right. And you know our defense stepped up. It was such a great team win to see you know, my, the defensive side of the ball. My teammates, you know, step up the way they did. See the hard work they put in the summer, fall camp, and throughout the season pay off in a moment like that. So I had total faith in our defense. I really did. I, I go against them every single day, and I know they're a good football and a, and a good football team. I know we're a good football team. I know we have a good defense. So you know, seeing that was just you know an unbelievable experience for everybody. They haven't. You know, they didn't have much of a track record up to that point of making that kind of a, a, a goal line stand. But what do you think that can do for their confidence and for your whole team going forward? No doubt. I think it just gives them a little more confidence than they already had. I think they're a good football team. I think we're a good football team. I think we have a good defense. You know, I really believe that. And um, they give us you know, a lot of turnovers for us to take advantage of it. And we haven't done that this year. So I think we need to play better on offense, first of all. And our defense has done a good job this year. And they've continued to show that through the first five games of the year. Uh, Davis, what did you see on a few of the touchdown passes that you threw? I know they're playing a single high safety, so you could go to Chad or Demetrius on the outside there. Yeah, you know, just the whole game, you know, we only had 49 plays to play with, so um, usually that's a half for us. So it was a little, you know, uh, we were out of the rhythm a couple times, and that's just hard. They had the ball for 47 minutes. Uh, we had the ball for, you know, 17 or whatever it was. We had the ball for 43 minutes. We had the ball for 17 minutes. So. Uh, we were a little out of rhythm, but we knew that going into the game that Utah was going to ball control us a little bit and you know throw us off our game a little bit. But at the same time, Chad Hanson, Demetrius Robinson did a great job on the outside, being their corners for you know a, a pair of touchdowns apiece. And so I was really happy for those guys the way they competed and you know, the way that they stayed with the game and stayed focused and understood that you know we don't have a lot of chances, so we might as well make the most of them. But at the same time, Vic Wharton and Mel Keystone all made the two catches of the game um, that really set us up on those two thir uh, second and ten for Vic Wharton at third and. Um, six for Melky Stovall. So, I mean, those guys made the plays of the game, and, you know, we're just excited that our whole team stepped up. Uh, looking at Oregon State, obviously they're having some problems with the, the pass defense is comparatively the strength of their defense. What are they trying to do uh, on, on, on defense, specific, specifically against the pass? I think they do a great job defensive scheming. I think Coach Anderson is one of the best head coaches in the Pac 12, and um, yeah, I think Oregon State, you know, their record might not show that, but they're a great football team, and we have our hands full because if we don't play good on Saturday, they're going to beat us. Um, Oregon State's a very good football team on defense. Their secondary is the strength of their defense, I believe. Um, you know, their corners do a good job, you know, mixing up disguises, playing off, playing press. You know, they keep you on your toes a little bit, just kind of, kind of like Arizona State does. So um, they do a good job defensively, and we have our hands full as an offense. What about uh, push? How do they, they blitz a lot? Do they stunt? What do they do to try to get to you and disrupt? I wouldn't say they blitz as much as Arizona State or Utah does, but I would say they drop in coverage and rely on those guys to, you know, fill their zones and stay on their mans. And they do that. They do a pretty good job for the most part. And um, you know, I think we have our hands full as an offense, just going against Oregon State, a team that has, you know, we're going on the road. We haven't won a road game this year, so we have our hands full, and uh, we have a lot to prove, and so do they. So I expect a good football game on Saturday. Davis, how important is it for the older guys on the team like yourself to to make remind the young guys that not to look at what Oregon State's record is, that uh, you're coming off a great win, but now you've got to take the same approach into this next game to make sure that there's not a, you're not stubbing your toe? No oh, doubt. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of lessons learned this year from both sides of the ball. I think we're you know prepared to hopefully determine to play back-to-back -back weeks just like we did last week. And you know we haven't done that this year. Um, we're just looking forward to the opportunity to play a great Oregon State team and prove that we can do it week in and week out. And that's a, you know, it's a huge goal to have, especially because we're playing on the road and you know, a tough environment to play against a great football team. So we have our hands full, and we're just looking forward to the opportunity to hopefully play good back-to-back -back weeks.
Uh, Davis, you mentioned briefly playing on the road. Uh, you guys have beaten two ranked teams at home in two tries. How do you take what you have here and translate it to the road, especially think, a place like Reeser? I think we just need to create our own energy. I think we struggled with that again, a little bit against Arizona State. Yeah, we came out pretty hot, but we did not create our own energy. And um, that's something we've really focused on this week is, you know, there's 60,000 people in there booing you. You need to be able to create your own energy. and you know, find a way to play for one another. So that's something we're going to work on this week. And um, we're looking forward to the challenge going against a great team and a great environment and, you know, Oregon State and hopefully come out on top on Saturday. Um, what were the biggest challenges coming to Cal this year? And um, also, I assume there was some culture shock. And if so, um, overall, how, how, what's been the key to your overcoming all of it? I don't think there's been many challenges. I think my teammates, you know, are the best part of this whole experience. You know, I'm really close with all of them, and uh, we've bonded very well in the summer and throughout this season. And um, just being around them each and every day makes it a lot easier. I had a plan coming in here and trying to make sure that my hard work and my work ethic kind of won my teammates over, and it's worked thus far. And I'm gonna continue to do that, and you know, try to be a leader for this team, and because we're very young, but at the same time, we have a good enough senior class and a good enough captain class that we can do that. So. I don't think it's been very hard, honestly. I think my teammates have been the best part of this whole experience. And the culture shark, shock, yes, it's a little different than, you know, Dallas, Texas or Lubbock, Texas. But at the same time, I've embraced it. This has probably been the best experience of my life, just being here. It's really um, allowed me to embrace the culture and, you know, kind of change the little nuances about me that I didn't before and kind of grow up as a man and be more mature. And uh, it's been a great experience. I'm very happy to be here. So how many days have you worn Tiva sandals and how many days have you worn your boots? I'm not ever going to wear sandals. I just don't think guys should wear those. And then <laughs> I have, I have, I've worn my boots once with Pat Worstel because he's a be, he's a big boot guy. But at the same time, I'm going to wear my Vans, wear my Nikes and I'll just be myself and, you know, just be myself.